for another exciting edition of Keeping It Real right here on 3FM at 92.7. My name is AJ Kwako Sapon and I'm here with the coolest group on radio uh, with some very incredible personalities as we get into all topics and we absolutely keep it real. Whether it's related to relationships, love, money, everything else in between, we always keep it real on Keeping It Real. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. And of course, I usually do this with Helen, but she's not here. But one and only, the ever lovely Miss Jude is here. Hi, Miss Judy. How, How you are you? I'm good, yourself? I'm good. How's your week been? Ah, uh, I think so far, so good. So far, so good. Yeah, yeah. we'll take it like that. We'll take it like that. Now, joining me on the show today, we have a, a lovely gentleman and a very lovely lady. Mr. Franklin Ajete, he's an international education consultant, and he joins us on the show. Hi, Franklin. Hello. How are you doing? I'm oh, fine, thank you. How's your week been? It's been good. It's been good, eh? Yeah. We like, we like to hear, we like to hear. <laughs> and as well, joining me, media personality, Ifia and Shroma. Hi, Ifia. Hello. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank How's you. How's your so week? It's been okay. It's been okay. <laughs> All right. Everyone has had a fairly good mm-hmm. start of the week. Yeah. <laughs> it's been long, but <laughs> I'm not even gonna count. And it's just Tuesday. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's it's been a long week. But hopefully we have a a, a holiday coming up on Friday yeah. and and Monday. Monday. Even though it's not much of a holiday, yeah. but we'll take it like that. We'll take yeah. it like that. We'll take it like that. Um, any big plans for the Easter? <laughs> if yeah. I'll go for like a church picnic. Oh, church picnic. Yeah. Oh, how lovely. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Hallelujah. Are you uh, <laughs> Franklin. I, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm begging people to invite me. Oh, you're oh, begging oh, people. So they have no plans. Oh, okay, so you can go to the church. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Miss Judy, what are you doing? Um, traveling with the kids. Hey. <laughs> Intra or outer? Oh, no, intro. Oh, okay, okay. Hey, the yes. man said he wouldn't go, but ah, that wouldn't stop us. We like it, we like it. <laughs> Enjoyment is key. <laughs> And that's me. I'm, I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping. I'm, not doing, I'm, I'm just sleeping. Don't have a date or something. <laughs> so they get? Don't have a, a date. No, 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 nothing. Oh, I'll just, I'll just don't sleeping. trust AJ. Oh wow, Miss Judy. What about you throw me under the bus? <laughs> when it comes to dating, don't uh-huh. trust it. Oh, oh wow. Oh, oh me. I'm, I'm up to nothing really. I'm just gonna be like single girl in the house, just with the mother. And just looking at at the walls. Phil four doesn't walls. agree with you. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I don't believe it. Hey. Oh no, but oh, well, all innocent, all innocent. But let's talk about something not too innocent. Um, <laughs> a lot of times, and I've heard these conversations before. Um, and today we're speaking on couples that get married and feel the need to ditch their single friends, like us. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, if you have you ever ha- heard of been in that situation or um, heard that situation happen to someone that you know, yeah. where once they get married, they start mm. to surround themselves with married folks, yeah, and they you know, need to be in married company mm-hmm. because the the single ones don't understand what goes on, and you need to surround yourself with a support system that understands you. Is that something that happens if you? Yeah. I've been there you've, before. Oh, you've been. Oh, yeah, you, yeah. De- wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's backtrack. Okay. You have been. I've been there. Before. You've been in a situation where you've been friends with someone, yeah. and because they got married, yeah. they ditched you. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Just what she said. She told me that, and so my, you won't understand mm. when you get to that level. Hey. You will know. Hey. Not naturally. Wow. Yeah, I was hurt because this is a friend that I've been with her for so many years. My goodness. Yeah, but the moment she got married, she started giving attitude. She started doing a whole lot. I mean, I felt it. So, I mean, I didn't I didn't wait for her to to ditch me. I actually gave myself a space. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so. Of course, I ditched myself because it was hurting. You know, this is a friend that you've been with. Yeah. You still want that friendship, that closeness, the love that you would love to go to places with her, where the places that I used to go before and now because she's no. married, I mean, oh, can you go? Oh, no, hey, my, my, my husband, you know, the one that rang, um, uh-huh. it's my husband. My husband, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I need to my husband, you know. Oh, like, I need to be at home in time for my husband. I know, right? I'm like, oh, really? I kept quiet for a few seconds. Mm-hmm. And then I, I had to bring myself to her level. I mean, I had to understand her mm. because, yes, I'm not married. I'm still single mm. and she is married. So with what she told me, 
I just accepted my faith and then I left her. Wow. Even though we talk, but not like before. Yeah. before. Hello, yeah. hi, how are you? I'm, I'm good, okay. Oh, I'm going home. My husband. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, my God. So when I also get my, I'll be like, so you see, we uh-huh. now, <laughs> now, 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 I yeah, understand. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> you better get married. <laughs> but frankly, have you ever heard, have you ever been placed in a situation or at least seen it go down? Um, so I will talk about myself. Okay. Uh, before I, well, I got married a bit late mm. in my thirties. Mm. So, but before I got it's married, thirties late. Yeah, I was about well, to ask. Like, it was, it was. As compared I got married to your at friends. Thirty-seven. As compared to your friends. Yes. Okay. Because most of them are, were married. You know. As of. Yeah, but I got married at thirty-seven. Mm. In fact, thirty-six, mm. thirty-seven, and. I've done my play around, you know, so I said to myself, you know, because I'm going into this thing, I'm determined, I want it to work. Mm. I decided to change my SIM card. Mm. You know, so Wait. I changed. What? Wait, what? Uh, yeah, so, so change your SIM card. Yeah, At so all, compl- call cut yourself me. completely from yeah. everybody. From, if you don't have the details, you can't get through you to me. You can't get through to me. So there were, there, were, there were a few people I kept, and there were certain people that I knew <clears throat> It's not going to work, you know. They might influence either my wife or myself, so I need to cut myself off. So I did. And then I'm after, sure. but when I meet them in town, oh, hello, how are you? Mm. How, but you how don't give you them been? your number. Then, oh, so what are you doing? Are you married now? Oh, yeah, oh, wow, take my number. So, you know, so I know, okay, we're on the same level now. Mm. You know, because in terms of friendship, friendship is deep. Mm. And you can be influenced by your friend easily. So when we're not married as men, there's so many things that we do. We go out, we drink, we could do different things, you understand. And when you're married, you can't. It's difficult Mm. because then how do you manage that relationship? Where you're sleeping over, you're staying late in town, your wife is at home. If your wife starts start doing that, you won't like it. Mm. So you need to model good example. So that everyone would know. And then when the children come in, for me, I got married in London. When the children came in, there was no, no one to help. Mm. You know, so if I should leave and go clubbing and having fun, because I used to club a lot. Mm. So if I go out and do that, who's going to help her with the baby? Mm. You know, it's mm. not fair. Mm. You know, mm. then I'll end up getting. Uh, with um, what you call the postnatal blues, mm. I didn't want that. Mm. <laughs> you okay, know, so makes sense. It, it, yeah, it depends. So what I would say, I didn't cut off everybody. But there were certain friends. There were certain friends that I knew how we were and the stupid things that we used to do together. Okay, so, so is, is, is it that you have went. to categorize certain friends? So there are certain friends that you know that whether they're married, whether they're not, we're good, we're forever. Yes. It's, it's a lifelong thing. Fantastic. Then there's some that you know are more fair weather, more party friends, more in, in let's fact, get loose friends. In fact, there are some friends that were also married, but they won't be my friends again. Ah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have because, to explain. Because the fact that man is married doesn't mean... You know He's what I'm worth saying? hanging out. Exactly. Hey. Yeah, because there's some friends that we're always watching. You know what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. Yeah. And they're always sending those things. And you, you know, know, yeah, okay. And then, and then you have children and you're thinking, mm, what if my wife sees it? What are they going to think? Mm, you mm, know, or mm. even your profession. So you have, you have to be very careful. Mm, you mm. know, so it, it depends on your standards and the standards of your relationship with your wife. Mm. You know, because some people have different relationships and mm. understand it. Yeah. So it's okay, you can go and play and do whatever and come back. Mm. Others, you need to watch your wife. Your mm. wife may not be happy. Mm. So if you want a good home, you want a happy marriage, then you need to check and know that this friend cannot come to my home. Mm. This friend can to a certain limit and they must go. Okay, you know? okay. And you okay. hang out with some married friends, have your drink and say, all right, bye-bye, I'm going home. Yeah, my wife is oh, calling me. Yeah, so, that the limit, <laughs> so there's a limit number. When we were not married, mm. me, I can go Friday and come mm. Monday. Mm. And because you have no one to account yeah. to. Nobody to yeah. account to. Yeah. You know, and spend as much as I can. <laughs> ah, but you know what you do. DJ Phil. <laughs> Is it like you? And you are now. <laughs> That's like you. <laughs> it's the straight bullets we've caught yeah. by DJ Phil. <laughs> That's very interesting. Now let me come to you, Miss Judy. Did you cut off friends when you got married? I actually didn't. Okay. But Explain. Okay, so as time went on, they actually left, mm-hmm. but I didn't cut them off. Ah. So the thing is, you get busy. Okay. It's not like first that you don't have anything to do. Okay. Right now you close from work or wherever you're going to cook. You mm. have a house to clean. Mm. So you are not constantly on WhatsApp or calling them to check up on them. Mm. So they start complaining. 
they say they want pursue, you're not checking up on us. Mm. And that's not the case. The thing is, I don't have the time to do certain things. Mm. So I, I remember one of them, when I gave birth to the first, basically I had no idea how to even put on a diaper. So I was struggling. And then she calls with nagging. I'm like, Madam, relax. Have the first baby. And I believe you call me and tell me that, Mia, sorry. Mm. And it actually mm. happened. I was glad. She gave birth in London and then she called mm. and said, I'm sorry. Do you feel it? Like, I, three I, I, years I, I, ago, now, yeah, I now understand. I don't blame you. I, I really, yeah. Like, so sometimes it's really not you cutting them off. But as time goes on, those who want to be there and we'll understand there. you will be there. Yeah. Mm. And those who really think, oh, because you're married, you don't have time for them and you don't want to go out. I even still have that issue. Like, they'll call you, oh, can't we sit out um, after Friday in the evening? Yeah. And I'm like, I have to go and pick someone. I have to mm. go and do this. Mm. I'm sorry, but you, when the time is right, it won't happen. But, and you know, they'll start like, hey, you alone every time you're busy, you're this, this, that. Mm. You it is not exactly like that. So I mm. believe it, with time, they get to understand. But those who don't to understand, yeah. Well, never. Mm. Okay. That's <laughs> okay. Well, let's get into this story for today because imagine it's different if your circumstances now prevent you from hanging out with your single friends. But how would you react if your spouse mm. is emphatically telling you that you have to cut off your single friends? Well, that's what our person is going through today and says, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you and your entire team are doing well, AJ. I'm writing this to let you uh, in on a bit of frustration going on in me and my husband's home. I'm a newlywed, been married for only two years. My husband and I constantly bicker about me remaining in constant communication with my friends who are single and unmarried. He says I need to stop hanging out with them because they will have a negative influence on me. These are friends who have been there all my life. How am I expected to now drop them because they aren't married? He has only two friends. Both are married and everyone else he refers to he and refers to everybody else as acquaintances. This is a conversation we've never spoken about before getting married. But after we came back from our honeymoon, he started the conversation and it's one thing we can't agree on. I'm so confused. These friends he's talking about were here even before he arrived. I don't know how to go about this. Yeah. Now, if you're in a situation where it's not that they are bad, or it's not that they are you, you don't have anything in common with them. Everything checks out. They are good people. They are still great influences in your life. But your husband is of the view, or maybe your wife is of the view that once they are unmarried, they are automatically a threat to our relationship. Mm. But once they are married, then they are good for us. We need to surround ourselves with married folks. How do you go about this? Who wants to go? Oh, no. Well, <laughs> Frankly, let's please. start. Um, so we work with different people. Yeah. And um, as a teacher, I'm a teacher. You know, I spend most of my time at work mm. with different people, and they become friends. You know, we become very close. Sometimes we eat from the same plate, mm. you know. So when you start giving me limitations that I can't be friends with this person, I can't do that, then it, it puts some kind of strain on the relationship mm. then you, you start making me feel like you're bringing in some narcissist kind of approach to it. Uh, you know mm. i've got a mind of my own mm. and i i know all these people i knew them before i met you and yes. i i chose you out of all of them yeah so it's not now that i'm married to you that you think that i'm fickle minded mm. so i'm going to go astray with those people you understand maybe we can you can advise me a bit but leave me and let me be who I am. Mm. Because it's a relationship. And if you're there for me, wherever I go, I come back to you. Mm. Like when we first got married, um, I will still go out clubbing mm. sometimes. And my wife will be okay, like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, okay. And then she, sometimes I'm like, hey, when she call me to find out who I am? <laughs> In this room now. I'm I sure could be doing anything. <laughs> but she doesn't. And when but I she come trust back, you. Yeah. Yes, when I come back, she doesn't be asking, so where did you go? What did you do? Mm -hmm. Who are you with? So I'm like, ah. so I just think I'm thinking, I said, oh, hello, are you back? How did you go? So, and I said, I'm like, hey, this woman. So because of that, when I, I'm in a hurry to come home, but this mm. is my best friend. Mm. You Come know, and just what happened. Just you won't believe it. You won't believe it. And then, you know, she never gets angry about where you're going, what you're doing. So I'm always at home. Now that I'm in Ghana, anytime I visit London, I'm home. Mm -hmm. I don't go anywhere. I'm in the kitchen cooking. Mm. I don't really go anywhere because home is nice. Mm. It's pleasant. But the moment she starts nagging me, 
what are you going to do to me? Say, don't go, don't do this. Then I get like, ah, what's this? Who may share me so? Mm. Mm. Then, then I will rebel. Mm. So, but then it's also tricky. Sometimes you can see that the kind of friends your husband has got or your wife has got are mm. not good for them. They're not good because of certain body language or certain attitudes that you are seeing. Mm. But you need to find a pleasant way to let her to know. say it and don't let it be like I'm forcing you mm. can't go out. Mm. So my catch also and call. I then I'll call you. Mm-hmm. So when you start doing that, then you're treating your wife like it's your child. Mm. And even our children, we don't treat them like that. True. Because my son is 18, he's got ch- he's got friends, and some of the friends I'm like, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> this one, I have to be very tactful about mm, it. Mm. So the moment you are not tactful about it, then you make the person feel like they are stupid mm. and they don't know what they are doing and they are friends with and they can be easily influenced. Then it becomes. Yeah. You know, he doesn't get comfortable anymore. Mm. And if mm. you are not careful, that might lead to the break of your relationship. Mm. Mm. That makes sense. That makes sense. FJ and Shoma, let me come to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think that when you are in a relationship with someone mm. leading to marriage, I think all these things need to be addressed, addressed mm. first. Mm. Because uh, maybe I might be um, um, an extrovert person, I would love to pass, like I do so, so many things, <laughs> but I mean, you'd like to be at home. So mm. in the, everything needs to be discussed. Okay, so I, I know you have friends, but can you limit it? Can you mm. do this? Can mm. you do that? Mm. The moment you start that in a relationship, getting into marriage wouldn't be a difficult thing mm. because you've already discussed. But here lies the case that you haven't said anything about it and then we, we're already married and then now you are telling me I had to cut ties with my friends because they are not married and mm. your friends are already married. I mean, that doesn't really tell you. With me, I will find it... I mean, I, I will find it some way. Mm. I, mean, me, I won't feel comfortable. Mm. Just like uh, he said, I mean, I'll argue with you. So why would you, I mean, say that? So yeah. all these things need to be discussed. Why both of you are in a relationship? And I believe that in my, I've, I'm not married, but I know marriage is, is understanding, right? Mm. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, you understand each other. I mean, you, you rub my hands, I rub your hands. So, <laughs> I mean, it needs to be discussed. That's yeah. what I believe. But with what the lady is saying right now, I think the man isn't really being... Fair to the lady, mm. yes, and yes, she 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 had the friends before you came into her life. I'm sure most of her friends even helped her when she was down. I mean, when she needed help, all these friends were there. I mean, not all of them, but I I think maybe one or two people will be there for her. Mm. So you telling your wife to cut ties with such friends, it will be a bit difficult. Mm. If I have such friends who has helped me when I needed help, they were there for me until I met you and you got married to me. You would tell me, you advise me to leave them. I mean, I would. And then if you drop me in the end. <laughs> exactly. What if we divorce? Where, where do I get? Oh, where I go where to? Get, yeah. Where we get to a certain level that I think our marriage can't continue. And it is this Who's the time that me? who is there for me? Who is there for me? I have to go to my friend and say, "Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I've actually." And you see, most of the women we like doing that a lot. Yeah. When we we get married, just like you were saying, your chair and walker cry. Mm. Oh, I'm married. Like. You're not to that level, mm. so do you lame and then I'll get to my lane too. But the moment issues begin to pop up in their marriage, we go then back. yes, they go back like, Oh, you see, my husband is doing this, so what do you think I should do? You. <laughs> 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 you should know. So I feel it needs to be discussed before getting into marriage. Mm. For me, I would do that. Everything needs to be discussed before I say I do. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Okay, coming to you, Ms. Judy. Now, this is a situation where you are being told that, Charlie, you should be with my woman. Mm. Like, honestly, I think if someone was to tell me that, I'll, I'll flip. I'll be like, ah, what, what are you talking about? How, how does their marital status prevent them from being good friends? But this is a situation where our lady is clearly facing. What are your thoughts? The thing is, being married doesn't make you wiser. Mm. There are a lot of single people. <laughs> we are more wiser than We are married. way more wiser than married oh my people God. who can make good decisions mm. more than you. Yeah. So being married really, it's just a stepping stone. It doesn't make you any better. Mm. In this case, like, I don't... The thing is, it's not everything that you remember to discuss when you're dating. Mm. So obviously this would happen after. Mm. And he knew before he married her, it was just a matter of time. But my point is, 
these are friends that I've known okay. who can help me, as he said, yeah. when I'm in need. Mm. So you are basically telling me to let all of them go. Mm -hmm. When we have issues, who do I go to? Mm. I only have my parents. Yeah. Exactly. There are certain things I can't discuss with my parents. Exactly. Mm. There are friends that you need to lean on when you are in doubt and yeah. they can advise you. Even if he thinks that these people are not worthy of being my friends, what are your reasons? Mm. What do you think they did that I don't know that makes you think that they are not supposed to be my friends because I'm married to you. Yeah. If you give me concrete reasons with evidence, that's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you just telling me, I am a matured adult exactly. who can make good decisions for myself. For that's why you married me. Yeah. So where is this coming from? Yeah. I think it's the insecurity. Most of the men, mm. insecure. And the women no, too. Unless oh, no, you are, no, no, it's more, it's more <laughs> of the men. It's more of the men. Insecurity. No, but it's if you are doing real. something and you feel like one of my friends know or might catch you, mm. that's another thing. Yeah. Mm. But I'm um, Paul, yeah, I need to go there, yes, really. Yes. yes. It's but like, yes. this is when I see her in certain places. What is your work? What is your Exactly. Mm. That's mm. fine. But then again, you have to tell me about it. Mm. But you just, you no, you can't command me to do something like a child. Yeah. Mm. We have to have that conversation. Mm. You have to provide evidence mm. why you want me to stay away from this particular friend, especially if the, she's the one who has been there for me. Or even if it's a he, mm. you still have to give me a re reason. Mm. Mm. My wife has never done that. I don't even really? have for that. Uh, can I chip in? Yeah. I had a friend who, who had someone that wanted to marry her. And then the person, she, she's also a TV personality. And then uh, the man said, oh, um, be because of the work that you do, a lot of men are after you. Mm. There's the, you know, there's the perception mm -hmm. that a lot of people have. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then the, the lady said, oh, no, why would you even say that? So she tried making the guy understand that this is her work. I mean, she, she, she got nothing doing with the men that he thinks she's doing that. And the man said, okay, it's fine. I, I will get married to you, but I can still continue with your work. He lied to the girl, and when the girl got married to him, now she has stopped. Yes. He said to resign. Yes, she, to she, yeah, he, he said, you choose between me, your husband, and your work. Never work. So, I mean, that, <laughs> she's married. I mean, you can't, you'll be married for like a month. You can't just say, because of my work, so I'm divorcing you, you know? Oh, yes, so, I can. So this, right. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is marriage at the false mm, pretenses. But, but yeah. you see, that's, that's a problem, because... I will choose my work because it's not going to stop. It's not going to end there. Yeah. yeah. You're, this You're is gonna a, break a narcissist me. attitude yeah. that's coming out gradually. Mm. There'll be several things that he's going to block you from doing. Exactly. And then weaken you, pluck all your feathers, and yeah. then keep you there, yeah. and he will be all over the place. And I feel sometimes, especially when it comes down to people in certain sectors, um, unfortunately, sometimes they end up getting spouses that love them when they are the top. Yeah. But want to keep them. They, like, sometimes they want, they want you to break you. I don't know if that makes any sense. Mm. So they, they they like the fact that you're this shiny toy that people love yeah. and you're on television yeah. or you're on radio. Yeah. But then once they get you, they want to be the only one that happy. Yes. So you must, they, they, they pick you to now put you in this gilded cage yeah. and yeah. say, yeah, you're pretty, you're shiny, but then nobody else should have access yeah, to you. Yeah, you have to be at home. You so it's a bit more it's tricky when you're in certain, certain sectors. Mm. Um, and you have to be more circumspect about who you decide to mm. to, to, mm. to take forever. Yeah. If they don't support your ambitions mm. very quickly, that is going to go down the drain. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. I, have, I have this friend, like, outside the mind, they mm. look so good. Mm. So I think some few weeks ago, she calls me crying. And I was wondering, like, what can make her cry? Because, like, Charlie... She's when, hatchik, hatchik. When you look at them, you would yeah. envy the relationship. Like, everything is so easy. And she goes, like, the husband doesn't want to see her happy. Ah. And I was like... In what sense? They've been married for, like, 10 years. What, mm. what do you mean? Good, yeah. So she goes, like, okay, so she was a nurse. She trained in the UK. She came okay. down, she was practicing. Then the man made her stop that... Um, she'll be doing nice shift. She <laughs> doesn't want, doctors. yeah. <laughs> so it's, she, he wants someone who is, who will be there in the night and this kind of thing. So she mm. stopped and started sewing. A very good. Wow. Like she's good at it. Now when everything started going well, he now said, says, "What do you need the money for?" Ah. Oh, <laughs> like, you are spending so much time working instead of being in the house. Blah blah blah. Imagine. So close the shop close the shop and come and take care of the kids because now the kids close from school and you're not there to take care of them and then unfortunately um something happened at home and instead of him supporting her he decided to support their maid and told her if she's hard enough she should walk out 
and this is a maid, I think one of her sister's cousins, so it's a family member from her side. I so mean, out I, of, I, would, I would walk off. So. Out of anger, she walked down. <laughs> and then the man now takes the maid and marries her? No. Uh-huh. So after we got their kids for sick, now she has to rush them to the hospital. The school called her, so she took them to the hospital, took care of the kids. And then after that, the husband begged her and she went back to the house. Oh, we married so fast. Now, this is the thing. <laughs> so much yeah. now. She didn't suck the maid. <gasps> oh, so, my God. And the bond between the maid and the yeah. husband, even though he claims there's nothing nah. going on. No, there's, there's a lot going on. There's something going on. And now, nah. when, when the maid gets hurt, he's there to be massaging the maid in front oh. of her. Oh, oh, oh. No, no way. No, that's her. That's her co wife. She needs to, <laughs> she needs to bring her husband. Maid. Now she's ruined because the man has said the house they see. built is the man's name. Yeah. Mm. Nothing belongs to her. The car that she bought, the man she bought with her money, but the man bought it for her, is in yes. his name. But they are legally married. They are very legally so married. So they'll split it. If you get a good lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. If you because get a good lawyer, that's 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 pertinent on that because you know in Ghana, no. the the division of of property is not a, as 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 mm. stringent as it is in mm. other countries. Mm. It's more like give her. I don't know if okay, maybe it's my layman looking from the outside in, mm. but it feels that a lot of times we don't do gold dutch on properties or money or property accrued within mm. the marriage. Mm. It's more of give her what she needs to survive with the kids, mm. yeah. and once you do right by that that's by the court's right. view that that's okay. Um, so yeah, because I was really very is. close to them to both. So I think mm. one day, I, somewhere last day, I noticed like bad energy. Like he didn't want the lady to be close to me. So when I noticed that, I also like just mm, pulled, pulled off. away. I didn't want trouble. So it was when she called, I was like, "Oh, I'm sorry. Like I pulled away because I noticed he didn't want you to talk to me." And he said, "Yes, it's true." Because the guy kept on saying, eh, "This lady that you are talking to, she knows everything about us, this and that." And this like. Like it's two different sides of the guy. Imagine if she has sucked you. She would she wouldn't have had she anyone any, any support system. system. Yeah. Honestly. You need That's friends. Sad. For my people, I think you need friends. Sometimes you need a you really friend. need someone yeah. to talk you need to friends. Yeah. Friends yeah. about yeah. things you yeah. cannot talk yeah. to your special. parents about. And and sometimes you risk also for some people that try to push away the, the friends of the spouses, it's sometimes to sort of uh, clip their wings yeah. because yeah. if you have no support system, yes. you are now dependent on them completely yes. for, for emotional support, yeah. and then they can now do whatever they want yeah. to you. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's also something to yeah, always. Now, what mm. what scenario is a good enough idea to to now tell your spouse whatever that maybe you should pull away from certain friends. And how do you go about telling them? Because as you really said, Franklin, it's a very delicate thing to say. <laughs> how do you go about telling them that, okay, maybe this, your single friend is maybe making moves on me. Okay. Or maybe she looks at me some type of way. Mm. Or when I, when I pass in front of her, she smacks me or something, I don't know. Mm. Um, or maybe this particular friend, I don't know, something about her grates me or makes me think that she doesn't have your best interest at heart. How do you go about telling your spouse in a way that will prevent them from flaring up and agreeing to maybe limit their relations to that person. Can you show me? Would you like to start? <laughs> you are doing this so hard. You're always in the <laughs> Yeah, so go on. And I believe in uh, mutual understanding. Mm. Um, there's a saying in Chi that Asimbiano yedi anone eka. So if, um, as a man or your spouse, you've seen that something is not right with your friends, I believe you can sit her down. And sometimes it comes with a timing. Sometimes you see there's, there's a particular time that you're not supposed to even talk about it at all. And there's a, there are some particular time you can talk about it. Okay. So you just it's just timing. You look at the atmosphere and then the timing. You sit her down and then you talk to her. In a nice manner, like you, you have your friends are bad, your friends are this, that, that, that. No, I mean, if you do that, either be it a man, the man or the woman, no one will agree to that. You'll be like, Oh, I the person person, shame so. But in a calm way, you sit her down and then you give her points, not like you just say it yeah, like that, you know. <laughs> you give her points, like, Oh, okay, A, I saw this, did that, that, B, I saw this, did that, that, C, okay, so if you don't believe me. I mean, you are for any two form, and then see. 
So I believe in you you sit the person down and then you communicate with her in a nice way. I mean, I believe in timing a lot. If the timing is not right, whatever that you say, I mean, I will just listen to you, but I won't, I won't take it to it. Or I won't even listen to you at all. So I believe in timing and the atmosphere that you discuss about this particular, because it's very, very sensitive. So you need to say it in a manner that both of you will understand. And you need to give it in a, a clear form for her to know that this is the reason why I'm telling you to, I mean, um, cut ties with your friends. Mm. Hmm. Cut okay. ties. Cut ties. It's harsh. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me go to you, Franklin. How do you approach this topic? How do you go about it? Um, so I personally believe in um, positive language. Mm. That to correct any attitude, negative attitude, you need to use positive languages. It's very, very effective. Mm. Yeah. So like um, my sister said here, you need to find the right time and the right tone Mm. and use a positive language but give reasons give critical reasons that make sense mm -hmm. you understand don't let it be anything to do with your selfish case yeah. but it's about your wife yeah. or your husband yeah. you know so give those reasons so that they are very very clear to them don't let it be like um you must cut ties mm. use a coaching style you know, when you use coaching style, you use questioning. So when you use questioning, they have to critically think. It gets them to think mm. that, hmm, hmm, girl can mm. Then you, you move them to that point where they make that decision, but you're not making that decision for them. You know, so it's, 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 you need to use intelligence to do the emotional intelligence is very important mm -hmm. you know so you're fine you're nine then you say hmm this is your friend what do you think about them mm -hmm. when they did is they did that what do you think don't you think it might or people might think then you leave them to make that decision without mm -hmm. making any decision mm -hmm. for them okay that's how okay. i go about it okay mm -hmm. so, I'll, I'll, can i can i please go ahead um <laughs> There's, there's this friend. I mean, I had a boyfriend that, um, I mean, my friend was making passes at, on him. And then uh, he came and then he said, well, can I talk to you? Because I trust, you see, women, we have issues. You can trust someone so, a friend so much that yeah. you Even think, Even when oh, you say it, it yes. doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So he approached him like, see, you have to be careful with this friend. Hmm. And I'm like, why? Every time you, you, you kept saying, but you're not giving me reasons why. why. So I got angry. I'm like, ah, why do you like saying this? Is my particular friend, you, you like saying this that every time you are, you are telling me to be careful with, with Just him. Just tell me why. You didn't give, he didn't give me reasons. So I got angry. And then he said, okay, since you you don't want to listen to me, I'll I'll leave it. Don't know if my friend was making passes at him. At him. And then at some point he couldn't sustain. So. I mean, he fell. He fell. Uh, yeah, he, he fell. fell. Yeah. He fell. Not like fell. As like doing the thing. Like, like, but they, they had some cuddling, some kisses. Oh, yeah. yeah. He fell. He fell. He fell. <laughs> but you see. Oh my God. So when it happened, mm. and then uh, I, <laughs> and you, you, funny thing is that my friend came, literally came to tell me that oh, wow. um. Your, your boyfriend, you have to be careful because he's oh, making look a at her too. You get so <laughs> I, I and do you believe the girlfriend yeah. over the boyfriend? I went straight to my boyfriend and I said, This is what my friend has said. How true is that? And then he told me, I warned you. Hey, yeah. Yeah. He, did, he did. He actually. told me, I told you from the onset, I told you that. This, this, that, but he, I didn't give you reasons because hmm. I, I didn't was, want to ruin the relationship. Yes, because this is someone that I mean, you've been that's how I, I came up with this trust. Women, mm. we trust mm. so much. The mm. moment you've been with a friend for like 10 years, 15 years, I think you know her, mm. but there's yeah, some but things you don't. Up, you don't. There's some things about her that you think you know, you have People no change. idea what she's capable of doing. Mm. And then he said, I told you, I warned you, I was trying to bring your mind on it that this is what it was, I've been mean, happening. I'm a man, you should understand. I ended up breaking up with my boyfriend. Oh. Yeah, which was oh. what she was looking for in the first place. But did he get back together with her? No. Ah, okay. <laughs> I will be there, you okay? <laughs> yeah, so sometimes they do, I mean, the man, sometimes they, yeah. the men do, do talk one, to uh, yeah. Yes, 
in in a different angle but i believe when you complain like you give reasons mm. that would be better and it will help a lot but if you are my if my money you're not giving me reasons why maybe i should distance myself from my friend i mean it's not helping i'm sure wow. most of the women are going through that but because reasons are not being given mm. they, they feel like oh because you are being selfish or you want me all to yourself that is why you're doing that but i'm sure they think it's good to tango yeah. Mm, true. Okay. Mm, so he's also at fault. <laughs> he's also at fault. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, you, you people he keep fell, saying that fell. I'm a man. I'm a man. So yeah. anything what that I see, yes, that's he what you men keep saying. Like he, he you chose see to go when there. it's coming. Mm. You see when it's coming. He uh, Boba, you can see it. Oh, but you know, you, you, you know some and men. Some assaulted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and but, but you know some died. men, when it gets a certain point, I mean, oh, oh, when you, you begin to touch them, they get to a point that they can't help themselves anymore. They can't can help can, themselves. Oh, can resist. They, they can't can can help themselves. They can't can can help themselves. Can <laughs> you know, the man that says, stop please, touching please. me, stop touching There's me. There's a one that says, no. Uh huh. I won't do again. Oh, no, but you know there are types Leave of no. Them. Oh, yes, there are types no. of no. Stop <laughs> no. <laughs> then you want it. Then you want it. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, but the noise, like the noise, bro. <laughs> do that side again. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, even the Bible says flee. Flee, oh, flee. So he did flee. Mm. He fell. He actually won me back. But he wanted to flee. And he he won. No, 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 no. He could have, he could have fled, though. He could have fled and then be reported from Siberia. That's right. <laughs> she came to the house and I ran. Watch your friend, go. But no, he fell. <laughs> oh, my. Miss Jude, like, coming to you. Now, how do you go about telling your man, maybe, that, you know, there's one friend of his that keeps hitting on you. Mm. You can't do like you know that the, what he's doing is wrong, but you can't tell him that the friend is out of order because they are really good friends. They've been friends for years, but you know that he should cut himself off the friends. But well, this friend Onyana Obe Obe Dinibone. But I think. What we should consider is the moment I say, Oh, this is your friend, I don't like him. Mm. You should mm. wonder why, why especially yeah. when you were dating, like I was cool, yeah. and all of a sudden, this is your friend. At least try to know what your friend is about mm. so that you can take another step, which I haven't communicated. Mm. Okay. But as always, communication is key. Mm. I have to be as plain as possible. Oh, this is your friend, His, the way he's flirting or the way he's acting around me. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. Mm. Maybe you understand. Yeah. A, a husband who really wants you would try to mm. stay away or, you know, give excuses for the guy not to come close to you. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's basically communication. I've, I've been in that situation that one of his friends was not making me comfortable. Mm. Like, he makes mm. silly statements, mm. you know, funny compliments. You knew that if, if you were in a dark room mm. with him one yeah. night... Yeah. Trouble. Mm. And you know he hurts mm. you and you know you're uncomfortable. I know. Mm. I what feel that. that? Yeah. 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 A it lingering hug. <laughs> I just said, this guy makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. And he knows I don't like being touched by people I don't like. Mm. So immediately I said, he was like, oh, what, what's he doing? Now nah, the way he touches me, I'm, I'm uncomfortable. Mm. I don't like him. So you do this. You do this. But still, you know, you know, so some people do, do that, and then they then put they yeah, put their hand yeah. in which I can't stand that thing. <laughs> <laughs> but no, let me flip it a little. Um, sometimes we have friends that take advantage of them. Mm. You, see, you see them being taken advantage of, especially with men. Maybe you're the better to do person, and you have someone who is not as well to do. And every time they go out, he's always you're mm -hmm. always paying the bill. Yeah. You're always picking up a tab. Mm -hmm. He's always milking you, and you know. Mm. But this person, when he goes to other places, can't pay. Yeah. Mm. When he goes, out, like he sometimes will bring people along. They will sit there. Mm. They will run up a tab, yeah, and then no as soon more. as the bill comes, oh Charlie. See you later, and then it bounce. <laughs> mm. And you're looking at Tito. You're like, how do I, how do I t let this person understand that they don't have his best interest at heart? Mm. Anyone who has your best interest will now start to think of how they can help you as against always taking from mm. you. How do you go about that? Mm. For oh, me, actually, so, sorry. Oh yeah, go on. For me, I actually think we are all mature people who should be able to make good decisions. Oh, they can do, don't do. Wait, wait, do I have to tell you? Uh, yeah. 
like the money that you have to bring for us to use for something. Why is she on a penny pa? Penny pa thing. He's he's yeah. he's a giver or mm. she's a giver, okay. and they're always taking advantage Thank of you. that. Yeah. So let me tell you one thing. Mm. So that's why I hope he, he doesn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> so, years ago, every December. Mm. I, I have to help him package like 50 hampers okay. to go and give to whoever, mm. really. I didn't even keep count. So yes, every year, we did it for like six years. And every, I never did it for my heart, because I'm like, what is this? Mm. Why don't we get it from these people? What and they never 50? send it. Yeah. Nobody sends us mm. anything. Wow. So one of his, um, he had a whole lot of funeral lined up. So I think he <laughs> forgot to do that. So, and that year, he got nothing. And he sent nothing, thankfully. He sent nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they called him to ask him, where is this? Exactly. Hey, now, this, this way, year, they want one, 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 one year. Uh, are you okay? Yeah. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, that is when we start to nag. Mm -hmm. Like, so, mm -hmm. I told you, this thing that you're doing, unfortunately, mm -hmm. for my father called at that time. So I took my nugget. I'm like, Daddy, can you imagine this is what he does? And my dad was like, stop it. There are some people who take their blessings from certain things they mm, do. Mm, sure. It's not everything mm, you should yeah. complain mm, about. Mm, mm. Watch if what he's doing is draining him or is bringing in blessings. Mm. If it's okay, stop complaining. Just mm. wait and watch. Mm. There are better things coming that you are not seeing, but you're just looking at what is happening. But please. And sometimes it's, it's, there's, there's, there's a people that are just not worth There are some that are worth it, what, what and there are some that are not. Yeah. Did you tell you also did 50 help? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for the first time, if it happens the first time, you, 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 don't, you just don't have to say anything. You just keep mute. Mm. Second time, it happens, just what? By the third time, I think you need to approach the person. The thing is, I mean, by the third time, the person is used to it. Used that to is it. When they've always been used to it, mm. imagine. Mm. You get, maybe before you even came into their life, mm. that's how they live. They always give. Yeah. Okay. Every time they're going out, every boys, boys, girls, girls, mm. girls mm. Or, like baller. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know, right. tell you, spend for us a I Friday think, night, yeah, young, young ball, uh, for the also, Christmas. Yeah. And now, yeah. all of a sudden, you come into the picture mm -hmm. and you're like, but this doesn't make sense. Mm. Like, they're saying things that will make sense. Maybe there are certain people that deserve a hamper, yeah. but there are certain people that you know you're just throwing money, money away. away yeah. And they would never do it I for you Honestly, if given the opportunity. You sure? I will stop. Now, how do you go about, con not convincing, but allowing them see the kinds of friends they have around them when they refuse to see it? I think I also pretend, yeah. at, at a point, I also pretend that I'm broke. I mean, I don't have money. And then start collecting for me. And I'll be like, oh, today I don't have money. I'm um, sometimes it's necessary to do that just mm. to know the kind of a person you you, you are dealing yeah, with, yeah. the kind of I mean people you have around yeah. you. So at, at some point I also be like, oh, today me I'm broke. Oh, I don't have it's money. Most, more sorted out. Yeah, more sorting me out. when people disappear. Yes. So when they disappear, then you get to know that okay, so these are the kind of people I have around yeah. around the circle I'm yeah. into. So now I also put things in my interest. I mean, when you do that, you're not selfish. I mean, you can't always be throwing. Even if your dad is a kufa no cry, you still have a <laughs> <laughs> your, man, your man keeps doing that. Okay. And you don't know how to tell mm. him. Seriously, I, I wouldn't even know how to tell you to stop. Yeah. yeah. Especially. And especially friends. if you probably said it before and then the person still doesn't get yeah. it. Have you ever been placed in such a. Well, I don't know if you've been placed in such but have you seen such a situation happen, Franklin? <clears throat> no. So now, how do you go about it? If maybe your wife is a giver, or your, your girlfriend is a giver, yeah. and then <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> we, are, we are doing hypothetical now. Okay, let's let's do factual. Your your wife is a giver, um, and and her friends take advantage of her because brunch, girls brunch, mm. Madame is paying. Mm -hmm. um, oh, let let's let's go for the movies, Madame is paying, and all of them always conveniently forget their purses. Now, how do you tell her that your friends are users, basically? Well, yeah. I think. It's the other way around for me. I'm the one who's like that. And my wife always advises me that be very careful. Mm. You're mm. wasting your money. He doesn't really bother himself about you like you think. Mm. And he's, if you need help, he's not going to come mm. and support you. Mm. And I learned my lessons the hard way. Really? <laughs> yeah, I learned my lessons the hard way because I realized that, ooh, I've thrown my money around. Mm. I could have used it. I could have for saved it. For something For something for us, mm. you know, rather than mm. doing what I did because... But then also... Y then you don't know who is being genuine, yeah. who is genuinely in need, you know, because people come across like they're in need and you come out to help them and you don't expect them to do good back to you because mm. you might not get it from them, you might get it from elsewhere, mm. but you need to be critical in your thinking as well and weigh your own situation that how much do I have? How much do am I able to spare? Mm. You know, looking within 
the family and the bills that you have to pay. So you need to be critical in your thinking. I always say that and, and think that, you know what, I have this, but I can't give it out. Mm. I have this, I can give out. Some are Christians, so they are led. Mm, yes. As much yes, as I don't have, yeah. I still have to I give do. to this person yeah. because they really need it. Mm. So for me, giving is a bit. Hmm. It's, it's, a, it's, my, a, it's my, a bit more gut. My mother, yeah. love your my mother is like that. Yourself. Not more than, than yourself. My yes. mother is like that, so I give her money, mm. and, and she she's gives, giving. People. My mother is just like that. Yes. <laughs> she's yes. Giving people. Like, my mother is chief mother. distributor. It doesn't I'm make any sense. You know Literally. So I gave it to you so you can keep it because I'm going back to learning it. Thank you. And then as I said, I want roller. No, but I gave you more. <laughs> She's giving them a house. So now we say, okay, we're giving you 15. Give this away. Yeah. And keep this. Yeah. Because you realize that she will give And then she will regardless. not stop. Yeah. She will not stop. So... Some people are being born like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think I think also the honest also falls on people who are with partners like that to understand that sometimes their giving is just led. Mm. Mm. And there are days like that where... You know that it doesn't make any sense what he's doing, mm -hmm. but he the, the God spirit comes and says, you know yeah. what, I need to help this person with their with their school fees, I need to help mm -hmm. this person with this. And, but you also need to now try and let them understand that you need to discern between those that genuinely need, need you. It. Yes. And the right now everyday so Ghanaian that will send you broadcast to like 15 people <laughs> with the same thing. Yeah. Oh, help me, yeah. school fees. Yeah. They send the same message to everybody. Okay, like, everyone will class, pay small, 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 small. So you now to know now to you now need to help them. Mm -hmm. this cipher between mm. genuine help mm. and then those that will just use them for the next quick let part. me say this funny thing yeah <laughs> there's this lady i mean she's crippled so anytime i'm passing by i give her some money and then i go to work and there was a day i i didn't give her money <laughs> and then i bypassed her and then she was called hello mother mother sister sister and then my mom is going <laughs> On the way, the calculations. Yeah. <laughs> I am I am so I had to turn. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody was just looking at me. <laughs> and funny that that I didn't have it down. So I was hey. trying to manage. But don't let you say, hey, I know I'm a miscarriage, but I was like, I had to go back. Hey, go and give out, Charlie. That's the thing, though. With a guardian person, too, expectations tend yeah. to become yes. obligations. Yes. You 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 are now you are now and then a sense of entitlement now starts to grow. So as you are going about town, yeah. decipher yeah. between entitlement exactly. and just generally helping yeah. people. Because someone will plan with your budget, <laughs> your pockets. You know, and then we'll we have a thousand, yeah. we have a five hundred, yeah. we have a seven hundred, yeah. my friend, we have a two hundred. We have five thousand. Yeah. 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 But you know, if you do that, people are planning with you. If you will be married, do that. I mean, I mean, when, if you ask someone for money, you know that this person has the money that he can give you. You start making calculations. Okay, <laughs> if you give me five hundred, five hundred, two hundred. No, no, me. I only plan with one person, the person I'm with. <laughs> that's, that, that's the that's the that's the only budget, the only person's pocket I plan with. Because I feel I'm not entitled to anybody else's money yeah, apart from sure. the one I'm with. And yeah. if the the one I'm with even says no, I need to figure out my and and, and sometimes he would say no, yeah. and I now have to figure out how I will be able to figure yeah. um, get let, the means. Let me remind you guys mm. at the beginning of the show, mm -hmm. someone was single. Okay. I, I and I no no I'm saying you know when I get a man, ah. when I get a man. <laughs> No, I say, no, I say, I say, I'm planning in the future. You see, you see, and then I say, my partner, when I get a partner, you see, and then I'll plan with only them. You understand? But you know, as single girls, you know, we're, we're just about how you know. You know what time is it? But it's been a good show, and it's time for us to wrap up. I mean, time flies when you're having fun. Um, but thank you all for tuning in, and most importantly, to my awesome guests who made it a very fabulous show. Um, I have to say a very big thank you to Franklin Ajete. He's an international education consultant. And Ifia Insuroma, she's a media personality. How can we get interactive with you both quickly? Okay. On social um, media, can we? Yeah, yeah. On Facebook, Ifia Insuroma. Instagram, okay. Ifia underscore Insuroma. And TikTok. Mm -hmm. Fear underscore instrument. Wonderful, and Franklin. And Franklin Najete. Frank Najete. And of course. Or, or, or Frankie Giver. Frankie Giver. G I V A. <laughs> the Giver Man. Hey! <laughs> Madam, 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 has something. Give it to the yes, to the yes. And of course, Miss Jude. My name is AJ Kwaku. So for this with DJ Phil, who should have come to say some of his own single, single man, single man about town? Are you? 
Surely Lord is coming through with the news at 8 4. <laughs> we'll continue with more great programming right here on 3FM. Catch you next week. Yes. I don't know, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you.